Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. As you can see, this is a talking head video, and that's just because I wasn't even planning on doing a video today, but a ton of news dropped that I just had to go over. But before I get to that, really quickly, don't forget that AMD is set to announce their RX 6000 series tomorrow, and I plan to do a stream for that, so make sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, all that good stuff, so you'll be aware when that happens. Plus, I'll have affiliate links for the RX 6000 and 3070 that's coming out the day after in the description below. And speaking of the 3070, it looks like Newegg has already listed a few of them. I would suggest going ahead, going down, clicking that link, and then clicking on Auto Notify. So as soon as they're available, hopefully you can jump there and make a purchase. Also, while speaking of the RTX 3070, the reviews have come in, and it's basically what we saw. As you can see, this is an average, a nine game average benchmark score, and the 3070 Founders Edition is neck and neck with the 2080 Ti. Now, I will say that what I noticed is that the 3070 tends to do slightly better than the 2080 Ti when it comes to things like ray tracing and DLSS, yet does slightly worse when it comes to your typical FE32 compute gaming workload. Either way, overall, they are fairly neck and neck, and given it's over half the price of the 2080 Ti, it's definitely still a great buy. Next up for today, we have some bad news. Now, I don't typically cover news like this specific to video games, but Cyberpunk is set to be such a huge title releasing this year, I knew a lot of you would be interested. Either way, Cyberpunk has yet again been delayed until December 10th. As many of you know, it was originally set for a launch in April, then they ended up pushing it back to September 17th, then it was pushed back again to November 19th, and once again is being pushed to December 10th. Just like with any other kind of push and launch date, I really do hate to see it. You want to see a company set a date and stick to it, but at the same time, as we've seen a ton of other game developers do, they'll release it and it's horrible. I'd much rather them spend a little bit of extra time fixing any kind of bugs or any kind of major issues that they have and releasing a finished game. That to me is far more important than reaching that date, so in a way I appreciate them doing this. Hopefully December 10th is the final time they push it back, though I will say that I was pretty excited for the November 19th launch, but like I said, it's better that they work on it than release a messed up product. Next up for today, we have a couple new leaked benchmarks for the Ryzen 9 5950X and Ryzen 7 5800X. Now, these scores are allegedly coming from CPU-Z, and I will say it can be faked, so this may not be accurate, but at the same time, it's definitely interesting to discuss. Starting things off with the 5950X, which is a 16-core, 32-thread CPU that apparently scored 690 points. For comparison, the i9-10900K, their 10-core, got a single-core score of 584, so a fairly significant jump versus the 10,900K, and remember that single core performance. Moving over to multi-threaded score, the 5950X got 13,306 point five versus the 10 core 10,900K getting 7,389. Now, obviously the 10,900K is only 10 cores versus the 12 core 5950X, but as far as pricing, I will say they're likely fairly close, although as of right now, the 10,900K I do believe is a bit cheaper, at least MSRP wise, it, it definitely is. But at the same time, the i9s typically sell for quite a bit more than their MSRP. Either way, with only two more cores, it gets nearly double the multi-threaded performance, which is definitely impressive. Moving on, we have the 8-core 5800X, which got 650 single-core score, which is still, once again, quite a bit better than the 10900K, which got 584. Now, I will say that this is one where the uh, multi-threaded score did suffer compared to the 10-core part, but of course, this is 8 versus 10 cores, and really, it didn't get that much less. At least compared to when Ryzen has two more cores, it's a massive difference versus two less cores, not too much of a difference. Next up for today, we have Copite 7 Kimmy, who has definitely been fairly accurate in the past with rumors whenever it comes to NVIDIA's RTX 3000 cards, and this time they actually found yet another GA102 GPU. This time it's between the 3080 and 3090, and when we look right here, we can see it's the GA102-250-A1. 
Unfortunately, while he did give us that it's on a 384-bit bus, he didn't tell us how much GDDR6X memory it has. With that said, he did give us the core count, which is 9,984 FP32 cores. This is basically their CUDA cores, and I will say that it's right in between the RTX 3090 and 3080. If we look, I did a little bit of math here, you can see that the 3080 has 8,704 cores versus this new 9,984, that is a 14% increase in core count. Now, as we've seen, 14% more does not necessarily mean 14% better performance in 4K. I mean, if we remember, the 3090 has a bit more cores than this, and yet it only gets like five or so percent better performance in 4K. Basically, not a big difference, but at the same time, what I believe the reason for that is that we're ultimately seeing a CPU bottleneck at these frame rates. So the fact that Ryzen is coming out now with faster CPUs, a much faster single core and multi-core performance, maybe, just maybe, games can take advantage of that and we'll actually see a bit better performance out of the 3090 in this upcoming 3080 Ti. Of course, that will likely take some time, but I'll probably end up doing some testing later on just to see what we get. And lastly for today, we have a really big story from Patrick Schur. Now, before I begin, I want to go ahead and say that uh, Patrick Schur seems to be uh, someone who's definitely working on these cards. He was actually the one, if we look right here, who gave Igor's lab a BIOS for him to run some tests on. So we know he has third party cards as well as BIOS information and things like that. So I will say that if there's someone that we can potentially trust for a leak, it's almost certainly him. Anyway, moving back, we can see right here that the Navi 21 XT, a Zeus Strix board. Now, remember that the XT variant is supposed to be the RX 6800 XT. Now, there is supposed to be one that's slightly better in the 6900 XT, but remember that that card is AMD exclusive, so board partners won't be making it. They will be stuck with the 5800 XT. Anyway, when we look at this one, we can see that on the engineering board on system one, they were actually able to max out at over 2.5 gigahertz, 2,556 megahertz to be exact. And wow, um, earlier rumors and discussion about AMD potentially able to get their Navi 21 XT or just their second gen Navi cards to pretty high uh, core clocks seems to be coming true. And remember that this is supposed to be across double the cores, as well as the new RDNA2 architecture, which gets you 50% more performance per watt versus RDNA1. So all of that combined really should make a powerhouse of a GPU. Certainly something that might be able to match or beat the RTX 3080. Now, there's one thing I do want to say a lot of people are reporting on this and reporting on it as being a TGP of 289 watts. But... Remember that Igor's lab specifically went over how AMD talks about TGP differently. Remember that when Nvidia talks about TGP, they're referring to the entire board, the GPU, the memory, everything combined, while AMD is only talking about the memory modules and the GPU itself. So when we look at TGP, whenever they say, uh, I think it's like 255 watts, we're actually looking at 320 watts. So something like 289 watt TGP is much, much higher than 289 watts. So keep that in mind, just like Nvidia's RTX 3000 cards, it does look like the RX 6000 series is gonna be a bit of a power hog. But still, look at this. We have system three, 2.489 gigahertz or 2,489 megahertz, 2,394 megahertz. So these are, these are really, really big clocks. Though, of course, max, I'm not sure if they're necessarily talking about gaming clocks. As we've discussed before, gaming clock is different from boost because when you're gaming, you're typically using 99 to 100% of the GPU. And simply put, it's not able to maintain those really high clocks while you're gaming, but something that doesn't necessarily use all of the GPU at once, it can use higher clocks per core. So yeah, I know that that was a bit wordy. I do apologize. Hopefully you still liked the video. Hopefully you learned something. I will say that I'm definitely excited about tomorrow, a bit bummed about cyberpunk, but of course, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, all of that good stuff. And as always, have a great day.